Hello, my name is Jacques Gilbert and I'm from beautiful Apex, North Carolina, the peak of good living. And it's my pleasure to speak to you today. And uh, I just want to share with you a brief uh, bit of my journey uh, as a, a native of Apex, North Carolina. And uh, again, born and raised there and spent my entire life in Apex so far. And uh, graduated from Apex High School in 1987. And uh, during that time of my graduation, uh, my dream was to become an NBA basketball player. Although I was cut from the basketball team um, in all my years in high school, so the coach just didn't see it my way. So I was, uh, after high school, I was trying to figure out my next step and the direction that I wanted to go in. And uh, I worked as a water meter reader for two years for the town of Cary. And uh, during that time, I was just walking around and you know, basically creating high water bills for people. But uh, it wasn't fulfilling. Uh, and I knew that I wanted to do something different. I just felt like I wasn't in my calling. And uh, only until a friend of mine uh, who was working for the Raleigh Police Department, he shared with me the amazing things he was doing in Raleigh and how he was going into communities and making a change. And uh, that resonated well with me. It perked my ears and I, I wanted to do something different or something similar. Because the community I was raised in, uh, predominantly black, there was a lot of things going on. Uh, a lot of my family members were involved with criminal activity and uh, I knew that wasn't me. Uh, that wasn't my identity. Uh, however, I loved the people in my community, including my family. And so when he spoke to me about the amazing things he was doing in Raleigh, you know, I had to take a, a look at that and, and ask myself a question, why not me? And at the time, I didn't think I was equipped to build police for two reasons. One, uh, after I graduated from high school, I was uh, five nine and weighed, you know, right at 105 pounds. So I didn't think I was physically able to do it. But also there was the struggle, internal struggle of how am I going to be accepted by the members of my community? who, by the way, growing up, would share with me, uh, that's not a profession you should choose. Uh, they're the enemy and you should do something different. But here I was at a crossroads, like what do I do? And so I took uh, about a week and made a powerful decision, unpopular decision to become a police. And I was so excited about it. I was gonna share with uh, everyone in the community, my family members, that um, I was gonna be going to the police academy the following month. And uh, once I gave them the information, the news, uh, you would have thought I told them I was gonna become a career criminal. And um, I was met with resistance. However, uh, despite the resistance, I continued to move forward and uh, served as a police officer with Apex Police Department. My first 10 years was uh, quite the challenge, um, being met with resistance from both sides. Uh, some of the things I've heard with stopping vehicles and uh, things said about me and uh, however, it didn't stop me because I knew, uh, I felt like this was my calling. Uh, I was truly making a difference in my own community. And so I continued to serve there at the Apex Police Department, rising to the rank of captain, second in command. And I look back and say, how did that happen? And it was really just about this, um, just trusting in God and, uh, and also knowing that this was a calling that was given to Jacques Gilbert and not anyone else. And, uh, and I think we're all called to do something. We're all part of making the community better, making the world better. And I knew when I uh, received that badge, uh, when I was um, serving in that role, it just felt right. Uh, it was something I enjoyed. And so I continue to move forward. So in 2019, uh, I was done. Uh, you know when you're at the end of a calling, an assignment, I was completely done and I was looking for my next step. I retired from the police department in 19, and uh, I was trying to figure out what was my next step. And in January of 19, um, I received this call, and I would say it was from God, and I was attending a, an event, and it was uh, the mayor's event where they were given the state of the town for the town of Apex. And I just heard this voice, internal voice, say, why not you? And so I said, that's not me, I'm not a politician. But the response was, but yes, you're a change agent and um, you can do it. And so with that, another call, uh, I answered that call and with the assistance of my family, uh, because they had to agree to it, um, with that I decided to put my name in the hat to run for the mayor of the town of Apex. And uh, I was blessed with that opportunity and became the 32nd mayor of the town of Apex. And uh, that's been a, a great ride so far. Um, 
of course, my first year was met with a global pandemic and then, of course, the uh, social unrest and all of the things uh, around the nation are surrounding just uh, racial reconciliation and also um, divide between community and police. So I would have to say that I, I've been positioned well for a time such as this to be able to share with others that uh, we all need to be a part of the change. And while your calling may not be the same as mine, you can get involved and, and make a difference. And no one's calling is better than the other, but we're all uh, uh, are given a call to make our communities better. So in my time uh, and my police career, around the year of 2016, uh, of course we were experiencing the divide between uh, the community and the police and really trying to figure out uh, how can we be a part of that change. And uh, as a captain, we were looking at recruitment, we were looking at uh, how can we better engage in the community, and um, just some of the practices and customs that we had used before, uh, it just it wasn't working. So we had to figure out, okay, we have to do something unique here and really uh, speak to the heart of the people. And so this is a very interesting story. Uh, I was trying to figure out how can we do that. And um, I was sitting at home uh, watching an NFL football game and uh, I saw my favorite football quarterback at the time, Cam Newton. Cam Newton scored a touchdown. And what I noticed is when the, the camera panned the crowd, uh, what I noticed was diversity. Uh, I noticed that people were having a good time and they were just enjoying the moment. And nothing else mattered at that time but that one touchdown and that amazing athlete uh, doing what he was called to do. And at that moment I noticed, wow, this is something that speaks well to a lot of people. It's a connector and uh, athletics is a way to connect people. And at the time, uh, I already had a curriculum I was working on. The curriculum was a police prep program. And um, really what I was trying to do is get people more prepared to become a police, to go to basic law enforcement training. And so what I decided to do is just marry that curriculum with an athletic program and form a college. And uh, so in 2017, we launched Blue Lights College. And the uh, mission is to train a new generation of police officers to approach conflict with compassion. So our curriculum is based on compassionate policing, um, not knowing that we would have a George Floyd in 2020, uh, but understanding that we had a Michael Brown and a Ferguson situation in South Carolina incident, uh, knowing that we had to do something different and get more people to come be a part of the change by joining the police departments and making a difference. Because I truly believe the only way to change anything on the outside, you have to go on the inside and make those changes. So uh, Blue Lights College has been a very successful program. We've had many men and women from all over the nation that have attended Blue Lights College and have gone on to become police. They're serving today. And uh, we're really excited about uh, the great change we're making through that program. And so uh, I just thought I would share that and uh, we want to continue to move that program forward. So with Blue Lights College, uh, again, the mission is to, to bridge that gap between community and police. And that's just not with police officers, that's just not with our students, but we need all hands on deck. We, need, we would love to have members of the community and uh, people to be involved with what we're doing. Uh, we require our students to serve at least uh, 100 hours of community service per year. And with that, they join in with members of the community and work on projects, uh, improve relationships with police in the community. And so uh, it would be a great opportunity for anyone to, to be a part of what we're doing uh, by simply going on our website, bluelightscollege.org, and just fill out a form, a contact form, and uh, our admissions coordinator will reach out to you and share with you information on how you can help us be successful with our mission. So we would love to have you to be a part of that. So what I would like to say is get involved. Uh, we need your help uh, as a mayor, as a former police captain, uh, as a community member, as a native of North Carolina, I hope that you will join me and others in being part of the change. While it may not be comfortable, it's necessary. And only the only way we can move forward for our soon to come youth and next generation, everybody has to take part in it right now and know that you are the change that we need. Thank you.